good well we're going to raise for praise next week and so today i just want to talk for a few moments from psalm 48 about raising the praise why should we want to raise praise to god um not just next week but at any time and um i hope that throughout the pandemic period um in the absence of being able to be together like we used to be together and singing like we used to sing together that your homes have been filled with the praises of god um sometimes in the morning i i've forgotten myself at six o'clock in the morning after i've come back from a, a sweaty run i've gone into the shower and I've begun to raise for praise in the shower. And then I suddenly remember there's one of those um, outlet kind of vents. And uh, my praise is kind of filling uh, the road where I live in. And there is a Bible scripture that says, you know, if you greet your neighbour too early in the morning, it becomes a curse. So um, I, I've had to kind of rein it in a little bit sometimes. But um, when I go running, I like to listen to praise music. And throughout the pandemic... Praise has not stopped flowing from my lips. Why? Because the Bible says in Psalm 48, Great is the Lord and worthy of all our praise. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. And so we read from Psalm 48 earlier this morning. And so this morning, what I want to do is just give you some reasons why we should want to raise the praise. Not just next week when we will raise the praise, but also um, any time of the week, any time of the day. The psalmist in Psalm 48 has a clear vision of God. And he gives us some great reasons why we should open up our mouths and sing the glory of God back to him, to worship him, to lift anthems of praise and worship to God Almighty. The first reason is simply this, is we should raise the praise because of God's presence. We should raise the praise, we should worship God, we should sing and give God glory because of his awesome presence amongst us. Amen. Psalm 48 verse 3 says, God is in her towers god is in her citadels in other words god is saying uh, that he is amongst his people there in the city uh, there in your home wherever you might find yourself whether you work in the hospital whether you work in a foundry whether you work in a shop whether you work in a school whether you are somebody that stays at the home because you're retired now wherever you are you can raise the praise because god is with you he is a god that wants to presence himself amongst his people god promised his abiding presence in the days of isaiah the prophet way before that first christmas many many hundreds of years before the first christmas isaiah speaks prophetically about the messiah the promised jesus to the world and in isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 we get the word look in other words pay attention everybody look up understand this grasp this this is something incredible you need to take this on board look the virgin will conceive a child she will give birth to a son and will call him emmanuel meaning god with us wow up until that time i guess the people felt almost far away from god because of their sin and unbelief and because of their poor choices and it seemed that only the high priest could go into the most holy place and now the prophet is prophesying and saying god is going to give you a messiah a, a virgin's going to give birth and and there's going to be this special baby boy and he will be called Emmanuel suddenly everything changes suddenly it's like God who seems like he's a million miles away can now be living right here in our hearts what an incredible thing it means today that we are standing or sitting on holy ground because God is here God is amongst us. God is in her citadels. That's what it says in Psalm 48 verse 3. And Jesus' personal promise 
to you and to me, to all those that dare to believe in his name is simply this. And you can be sure of this, he said, in Matthew chapter 28. As Matthew writes his gospel account of Jesus, as he sums up everything, you know, this is the end of Matthew's gospel. What is he going to say? It's an incredible gospel. What is going to be recorded there? What will Matthew write about Jesus? What words of Jesus will Matthew write down at the end of his gospel? And it's simply this. I am with you always. If you've forgotten everything else of Matthew, Amen. because it's, you know, 28 chapters. If you've forgotten the rest of Matthew, please don't. But even if you did, those final words of Jesus, I am with you. And I'm so glad he didn't just say, I am with Devon or I am with Darren or I am with Rob or I am with Bob. And, hey, they rhyme, don't they, Rob and Bob? I just realised. <laughs> he says, I am with you. So that means it's special to me. And I might not always feel like a super saint. And maybe you don't either. And somehow we're here by the grace of God this morning. But listen, Jesus says, I am with you. I think that's something we can sing about. Something we can praise about. His presence brings joy and peace to our hearts. It's Jesus who calmed the wind and the waves. His presence in that boat when the disciples were struggling made all the difference. And in the life that we live, there will be times when we feel like we're on the lake and it's windy and, and the waves are beating against us and the elements are against us. And, and we've all been in those kind of times in life when everything seems to be going wrong. When we're rowing and, and we're kind of rowing against the wind and we just feel we're not getting anywhere. Life can seem so difficult. And yet Jesus is with us. And when he is with us and we recognise that, it releases in our hearts a real sense of joy and peace. Throughout the pandemic period, I'm glad that I knew the truth of Psalm 16, verse 11. In your presence is fullness of joy. Throughout this long, difficult time that we've all been through, despite the continual bad news that the media has insisted on forcing upon the peoples of the world despite the restrictions that we've all felt and the frustrations and let's face it we all know for many reasons a lot of restrictions were for everybody's good and yet we were frustrated there, there have been some long difficult weeks and days and months that we've all gone through and yet through all that I personally and I trust you also have known the joy and the peace of the Lord why because God is with her. God is in her. God is in her towers. God is in her citadels. God is in Millpool Hill Church. God is in my heart and your heart. And so we can raise the praise and we can give glory back to God because of his presence. Let's raise the praise then because the Lord is with us. We can raise the praise not only because God is with us, but because of his protection in our lives as well. Hey, we're here. We're here. We've, we've come through a very difficult time. In, in days gone by when there have been pandemics in the world. The Spanish flu and the Black Death and, um, you know, when millions and millions of people died. You know, there have been some terrible things. But God has brought us through to this moment. I think we ought to give him a hand clap for that. Great, <laughs> great. He's a good God. He's brought us through to this moment. God is in her citadels, verse 3. He has shown himself to be her fortress, her defender. And then verse 10. As your name deserves, O God, you will be praised to the ends of the earth. Your strong right hand is filled with victory. We often go through dark valleys, but the great shepherd... The great shepherd, the chief shepherd of our souls has said, I will be with you. And even though we go through the dark valley, he is with us. His staff 
comforts us in those difficult times. He is our light, even in darkness. He is the God who protects us, the God who has stayed with us, defending us. Over the years, I've had moments when in ministry times, those that have been possessed by demons have lunged out at me to do me harm. At times, I've been threatened by people. It wasn't that long ago, I was sitting in an office and somebody uh, used a whole load of foul language and with their face and my face, threatened to put me in hospital and uh, there I would die because the life support machine wouldn't keep me alive because of the damage they were going to do to my body. And yet God protected me through that. I've had somebody come at me with a knife, but I tell you, in the name of Jesus, the knife dropped to the ground. Why? Because God protects his people. And here's the thing, over the years, although I've had moments like that, and maybe some of you have had some tricky moments in life, you could all write a book, I'm sure, about how you have been in grave danger throughout the years of your life. And yet, I'm still here today. Why? Because I'm here because of five of my friends. When I've gone through those difficulties, five of my friends have been with me and they have helped me. And here's the thing, you see, I don't go anywhere alone. Even at five o'clock on a cold, dark, wet Birmingham morning, when I go out from my house in remote, dark places with just a little head torch on and I do crazy running through streams and things, even then, I do not go on my own. You see, I've got five companions that stay with me. I think you might know these companions. I've got five companions. Yeah, it's not my wife. She's <laughs> safely tucked up in bed at that time of the morning. God gave her a gift of wisdom. <laughs> when I go out, I have my five companions. When you go out, you have five companions. You see, the father is with me and he's also with you. You see, the son of God is with me and he's also with you. You see, if the father and the son, that makes two, they are with me, but it, there's not only two, but there's also the Holy Spirit. He is with me wherever I go and he's also with you. And you're thinking now, because some of you have good arithmetic skills. Darren, our treasurer, is looking at me and he's thinking, Richard, you said five. You've only mentioned three. Well, Psalm 23 helps make up the difference. Because Psalm 23 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my five companions. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and bringing up the rear, goodness and mercy, following me all the days of my life. But actually, I made a mistake. I'm really hopeless at Mass, because not only five companions, but I think the Bible says there is a sixth companion that is with us as well. If you know your Bible, you will know that in Psalm 34, he talks about the angel of the Lord encamping around those that fear the Lord. Friends, I tell you, I can praise God. I can raise the praise today and every day of my life because God's protective power is watching out for me. Better than any closed circuit TV, better than any security system, better than any uh, elite squad of SAS or Red Berries or whatever uh, in the army. I have the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. I have goodness and mercy following me and the angel of the Lord encamps around me. And God does that also for you. Every child of his is protected. And so we can praise the Lord for that. I guess there are times we can look back on our lives, like I just did, and see how the Lord wonderfully protected us from some terrible disaster. And if we can remember that time when, you know, you slammed your brakes on 
and thankfully you didn't crash into another car or you can think about times when maybe someone did come at you and somehow miraculously God defended you in that situation maybe God defended your finances or or whatever it might be or defended us from this terrible sickness that has ravaged our world but there are many times friends when God is quietly at work in our lives. You see, he works 24-7. The psalmist said that God does not sleep, nor does he slumber, but he is continually watching out for his children. He loves us with such a passion, and so he is continually watching us and looking out for us. So I think we should raise the praise because the Lord is with us, but also because he protects us. We should raise the praise also because the psalmist says in Psalm 48 that God loves us with a perfect love. This world has all sorts of understanding about love. And the media will promote one side of love. And, and racy magazines maybe will promote another side of love. And, and then all sorts of films coming out of Hollywood will present another kind of love. The world has got all sorts of concepts about love. But the Bible says... That God's love is a perfect love. It is a pure love, a holy love, a passionate love for you and for me. In fact, for every one of us. What does the Bible say about God's love? Well, how much time have you got? Not a lot of time, I guess, this morning. It's pretty hot in here. I don't want to keep you too long. But the Bible does give us some insights into the love of God. Psalm 48 verse 9 says, Lord, we meditate on your unfailing love. How many of us have been told by our friends uh, that they love us and then when we go through a hard times, sometimes those friends seem to disappear like the morning mist. Well, God's love is not like that. It is an unfailing love. It is a faithful love. God's love will never, ever, ever let you down. We may be let down by humans, and that happens all the time. But God says, I will never let you down. I have loved you with an unfailing love. Amen. Psalm 63 says, because your love is better than life, my lips shall glorify you. God's love is better than life. And when we think about the things that we enjoy in life, maybe a nice car, maybe some nice holidays, maybe a nice house to live in, a beautiful garden, beautiful, sumptuous food to eat, nice clothes to wear, you know, um, going out to nice places and seeing things. The world is full of nice things and God has allowed us to enjoy these things uh, and they are good things and we enjoy them. And yet the Bible says that God's love is better than all that. It's better than life. In other words, if you haven't got all those things that the world considers to be nice, it really doesn't matter that much because if you are loved by God, it is better than all those other things. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. God's love is everlasting. And then in John chapter 3 verse 16 we know those incredible words where John sums up the very heart of God saying God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him might not perish but have everlasting life. God gave us the best, his son, himself. Why? Because he so loved you. I think that's a good reason to raise the praise, don't you? And then, if that's not enough, Romans tells us <laughs> that there is nothing in all the creation that can separate us from the love of God, which is ours in Christ Jesus. And John, the apostle, writes in his uh, first letter to the church, and he says, How great is the love the Father has lavished upon us. And that word lavish, I've often said, it's an incredible word. It, it means just like 
piling it on uh, without measure. When I have my toast in the morning, I lavish my Frank Cooper's Oxford marmalade on it. I lavish it on. I don't scrape it thin, but I just lavish it on. And that's why a pot of that marmalade only lasts a few days in our household. I lavish it on because I really enjoy it. And God lavishes on you his love. He's not skimpy, but he just oozes love for you. And he loves you so much. Thank God today that we know that God's love is personal. It's for us. It's universal. God so loved the world and yet it's for you. It's deeply personal. We know it's sacrificial because we just took some bread and juice and remembered that Christ loved us and died for us upon the cross. It's unconditional. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less or any more. It's an incredible, perfect love. His love is eternal. It's everlasting. We should raise the praise today because the Lord is with us, because he protects us and he loves us with a perfect love. We should also raise the praise because of God's incredible, powerful name. Psalm 48 verse 10, it says, Like your name, O God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. There is something majestic and praiseworthy about the name of our God. And what an awesome God he really is. The Bible tells us that in the Old Testament, God revealed himself to his people through those great compound character names. Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. Jehovah Rapha, God who heals. Jehovah Mekedesh, God who sanctifies. Jehovah Nisai, God who is my flag or my banner. Jehovah Shalom, God who is my peace, my wholeness, my completeness. Jehovah Sekednu, God who is my righteousness. Jehovah Shama, God who is there. Now we're not all theologians and we don't all um, study the Bible for a master's degree. Uh, and so sometimes some of us forget things. And those list of names that God gave his people in the Old Testament. Well, if you haven't got a great memory, sometimes you forget those things. But here's the great thing. God has given his son, Jesus, a name above all names. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of God that he is Lord. And when we think about all those old compound names of God, in the Old Testament, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Mekedesh, Nisai, Rohai, Shalom, Sekednu, Shama. When we think about all those names, they are a great description of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you forget the technicalities of those names, but only know the one name, the name of Jesus, you are blessed. Because we find in the name of Jesus salvation. There is no other name given in heaven and earth that men might be saved, but through the name of Jesus. Jesus is the saviour. He is the answer to you and to me. He is the one that can bring forgiveness into our lives and new life altogether. It is in the name of Jesus that people receive healing. And if you are sick here today and you're feeling ill in your body, you can be made well. Not through my name, not through Devon's name, not through Lynn's name, but through the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. You can be delivered today from anything that is binding you and afflicting you and trapping you and enslaving you because the name of Jesus is more powerful than any demonic darkness that is arrayed against you. You can be healed, you can be delivered, you can be saved. You can receive blessing from heaven through the name of Jesus. Jesus said, you can pray and you should pray. And when you pray in my name, I will ask the Father and he will do it for you. And this will bring glory to God. Amen. Jesus' name is the name we pray in. Jesus should be the name upon our lips when we think about salvation and healing and blessing and deliverance. We should raise the praise and we should lift up the mighty name of Jesus Christ.
God has given him a name above all names. And God has given you and me the name of Jesus to unlock the blessings of heaven and to receive all that God has for us through faith in that name. We should raise the praise because the Lord is with us. We should raise the praise because he protects us. We should raise the praise because of his perfect love for each and every one of us here today. We should raise the praise because he has a name more glorious than any other name. And I think we should raise the praise because of our personal experience in God. Psalm 48 verse 8 says, And we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord God Almighty. Psalm 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. All the joys of those who trust in him. There's nothing like a personal testimony of somebody experiencing the blessing of God Almighty in their lives. There's nothing like a personal testimony. When you hear somebody personally testifying to God's deep love like a vast ocean in their life it is powerful there is nothing like the personal testimony of a man a woman a teenager even a child who can talk about God's forgiveness and restoring power in their lives there is nothing like a personal testimony that says hey I know about God's nurture in my life I can personally speak about the care of God and the nurture of God and the kindness of God providing my daily needs he gives me my daily bread there's nothing like it friends when people get up and testify to the personal greatness and goodness of God in their lives. There's nothing like a personal testimony when someone testifies and speaks about the presence of God with them through good times and through the bad times. There's nothing like a personal testimony when people speak out and say, God delivered me, God healed my broken body. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like personally testifying to knowing that God is taking you from one degree of glory to the next. God is not finished with you. He is not finished with me. He is committed to the course. He started us out on this incredible journey of being saved in Jesus, but we are being changed and we're going from one degree of glory to the next. And there's nothing like a testimony talking about how God is working in our lives. A personal testimony is powerful. When the guy in John chapter 9 who was born blind was healed by Jesus. If you remember the account in John chapter 9, Jesus um, makes some spit and he kind of puts in the man's eyes and says, go and wash at the pool Siloam. Uh, and there the man goes and washes and the miracle takes place. This guy who was born blind could now see. And of course, Many people were excited, but the religious people, well, they weren't keen about this, you know. He's doing it again. Jesus is breaking the Sabbath laws and they weren't happy. And so the religious people questioned this man who was born blind and yet now could see by the grace of God and by the power of Jesus Christ in his life. And they were talking about all sorts of things and getting religious and getting bound down by their religious laws. And the guy looks at them and he can see them because Jesus opened his eyes. And he says, guys, you can say what you like about this man. You, you can have your five pence worth and say what you want. But I know this. He touched me and now I can see. And do you know what? I'm not the world's great theologians. I, I, I'm, I'm not that knowledgeable. I read my Bible and that's about it. But I can tell you this. I can stand on any platform. I can go to any nation in the world. And I can tell people I was once lost but now I'm found. I was once blind, but now I can see. I was once broken and burnt out, but Jesus healed me and made me clean and gave me a brand new life again. You can say what you want about Jesus, but I know this. He is Lord. He is Saviour. He is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is my King. There is nothing like the power of a personal testimony. We should raise the praise, friends, 
because the Lord is with us, because he protects us. He loves us with a perfect love. His name is above all other names. And because this glorious God that we have personally known and experienced in our life is worthy of all our praise. So next week, we're going to raise the praise literally together, corporately. And we're going to raise the roof with singing God anthems and singing God songs and being joyful in the house of the Lord. So next week, I want you to come ready to sing. Come ready to sing the praises of God. And I've given you Psalm 48 this week, just as a little springboard for you, just as a little springboard. These are some reasons why you should praise the Lord, why you should sing God's praises, not only next week, but every day of your life.